Hi, how are you? Perfect little case today. Um, this is a this is a this is this has got a case which, which is quite multifactorial in its in its challenges. Um, of course, I am doing this kind of truss ac access kind of uh, technique where you use a very very small access cavity to um, to, to to complete the root canal. And this obviously helps with um, the. Uh, the restorability of the tooth makes the tooth uh, you remove less tooth tissue so it's 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 stronger but this is also a case about a um, a suspected uh, missing MB2 canal and it transpires that eventually it wasn't an MB2 canal but um we'll get to the kind of the rationale and the sort of clinical signs and symptoms of, of, of why I thought there was an MB2 um, and it includes a CBCT so so we'll get on with the case um, essentially, this this tooth has got a, uh, a ceramic onlay. I believe it's a ceramic onlay. It looks like one, and it was a referral f uh, from another dentist who had accessed the tooth, but only um, accessed a tiny, tiny sort of um, sort of pinprick sort of um, access cavity. And um, and I thought to myself, well, what I, what I could do is I could just remove this this expensive ceramic onlay, or I could just um, complete the root canal within the confines of this access uh, access cavity that this referring dentist had had got to. So um, it's at this point I I I wasn't entirely sure if I was going to remove the whole restoration or I was going to just um, continue with this small little access cavity. So here I am here is just trying to remove uh, the cotton wool pledge that's been placed in here as a temporary filling. I don't like to use uh, cotton wool, I like to use PTFE because as you can see it's a bit fiddly to get the piece of cotton wool out and sometimes when you're using cotton wool and you put the GIC on top it can get kind of like enmeshed and it can be difficult to remove. So once we have uh, removed uh, the temporary filling, I'm not actually going to adjust the sort of outer outline of the access cavity. What I'm going to do is just remove some of the undermined enamel here. And, and, and I'm just going to use also uh, some ultrasonics just to remove, to sort of open up the access cavity from within. And, 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 and if I draw like a kind of a, a diagram here, it's kind of like a trapezoid sort of shape. Okay, and I'm just using the ultrasonics just to just to get rid of any sort of overhangs or just to make sure there is as much straight line access as possible. But obviously with these small access cavities, that's sometimes not the best. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to go straight for the working length of the palatal because I know the palatal is going to be quite wide and I am using a size 10K file here. And as I just hook up the, uh, the, the apex locator, I um, feel like that it's getting a little bit difficult to get to length here. It's, 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 it's quite tough. Um, and I, I suppose in a way, the reason why I'm struggling to get to length here is essentially because of um, the, the, the truss access, okay? Because essentially the, 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 the file is getting gripped further up because of the, 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 the tooth hasn't got a straight line access. So if you can't get to, to the working length, the best thing for you to do is to do like a stepwise motion here with your shaping. So what I've done is I have measured um, how far I've got with the size 10K file, and then I will use um, a higher diameter file, a millimeter away from as far as you can get, and then lots of irrigation, and then another higher diameter file, and just to help to get to the working length, I'm getting a size 31 uh, length K file. And, and as I sort of very gently watch wind here, um, I am managing just to get that sort of zero reading on my apex locator. And you can see here that the reference point is actually not on the palatal, but on, on the buckle. So what you can see here that the, the working length is 25.5 and I could open up a higher length uh, rotary file, but because the working length is 25.5, I feel like that I could just use the kind of shank a little bit to, 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 to use this as the working length. And also my master apical file, my final shaping file will be shaped to 25 and that's right up to the hilt. Um, so. 
So I, I suppose a way, it's a bit of a way up, isn't it, between, um, you know, uh, cost effectiveness and clinical e efficacy. And I feel like if I'm very, very careful here, I can, um, I don't have to open another, hand, uh, another rotary file. So I've saved a bit of money um, for the practice, which, which is important. So once we've shaped the palatal, we're now going to go for the working length in the, uh, the, the mesobuchal canal. And again, similar to the palatal, I can't quite reach uh, zero again. So I am just having a little bit of a twiddle around here. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring to as far as I can get. Okay, and the furthest point I can reach to is 20 millimeters. And then I'm going to use that same stepwise motion again. So I've got my glide path file here and I'm going to shape uh, the, 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 the canal, the MB canal up to 19. So this is um, one millimeter away from the furthest point away. Don't be tempted to go any further. Just, just, just use your patience and just to make sure you give it a bit of a clean. And again, I'm going to use my uh, size 31 uh, uh, length K file. And again, I'm trying to negotiate down here, just using a gentle watch winding motion. I, I still cannot quite get all the way to the working length. And um, again, with experience, what you don't want to do, you don't want to push this too far. Just take your time, use a stepwise motion, okay? You're just gonna um, try your best. If, if it's not gonna go with a size 10K file or an eight or a six, it's not gonna go with a rotary file. So one thing in my armamentum, which I really like to use these D finders, okay? So the great thing about these D finders is, is you can't quite get to length on your size 10K file. Um, and then you get these D finders out and then for some reason it just it just reaches zero. And I think it's because it's got like a smooth bore, these files, so it can it can easily slip into very, very calcified or sclerosed uh, canals. And we can find now the MB zero reading is 21 millimeters. So, you know, we've got um, the, 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 the zero reading for this and we're ready to shape straight away. So we're gonna use the glide path file at 21, at zero, and um, again, you know, I am just very gently using uh, a T mode with this just to make sure T mode is kind of like a reciprocation, like a like a watch winding type till I get almost to the working length and I'll turn it on and it turns into rotary. And then again, I'm going to use my uh, size 20 high flex. I don't often use a size 20. I usually go from a 15 to a 25, but I feel like this canal is so closed up that I want to use a 20. Um, just so my 25 doesn't get too uh, uh, sort of caught up and you know cause a ledge and same again we're going to use this at 20.5 millimeters rather than 21 so we're going to be minus 0.5 millimeters from the working length okay that accounts for the apical constriction lots and lots of irrigation and again we're going to gain the working length of db and straight away here i'm not going to mess around with it size 10 gig file i'm going to use the the d finder and um you know this slips straight to length really nice and easy we find out the working length here is 21.5 so once we've gained the working length it's kind of the same protocol as before okay we're going to use uh, the uh, glide path file at the zero reading so this is 21.5 um and then we're going to use uh in this case I uh, felt like we needed to use the 20 again. So this is, the 20 sort of opens up the canal a little bit for the 25 to, to reach all the way to the working length. And all three canals are shaped. So at this point, I'm thinking to myself, um, you know, is there an MB2? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use an ultrasonic tip just to remove uh, the, the, the possible dentine shelf, which always occurs over an MB2. And, um, I will link um, in the description below here where you can, um, the, the best video to try and find an MB2. And um, I'm using a succession of ultrasonic tips and also high energy, um, just normal periodontal t uh, ultrasonic tips. And I just couldn't find uh, an, an MB2. And, and another thing that I couldn't see is any sort of developmental lies that I'm moving in towards um, this this sort of possible area where there's an MB2. And also there's no change in denting color. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a cone fit radiograph and I'm going to use these really narrow tapered GP points. And this is because, um, because the, the axis is so small, if you were to use a, um, you know, a normal high flex um, variable taper GP cone, it, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't fit in the, um, in, in the, in the access cavity. And because we're using a bioceramic, um, we can use these smaller tapered GP points and, and obviously the, the canal space is going to be filled up. So the first um, cone we're going to fit is the palatal and we're going to fit these narrow tapered diameter files up to the point where it's been shaped which is 25 millimeters and as I gently uh, push this GP cone uh, to length it pushes past the the reference point so at, at this point I know when I when I pull this out and I measure it I know that the uh, the GP cone is longer than the the shape that we've uh, we've we've shaped to so I'm going to use this gutter cutter here just to cut the cone to a 30 so it was 25 and now it's 30 and as I push this cone gently but firmly to length um, I feel for a little bit of tug back and then I pull it out and I measure it it transpires that the uh, the GP cone is at the correct length. So it's at uh, 25 millimeters. So we know that this cone is at the working length and it's at the point that's been shaped. Okay. And um, and again, you know, it's, it's, it's just the same protocol for the other two canals. Um, luckily, the, the, the other two canals didn't need to be able to gauge because um, the, the, the fitting of it was, 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 was we, we measured them, we pushed them to length, we felt for tug back, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it fits all nicely. And um, you'll notice here that as I fit these cones to length, I like to snip uh, the ends of the GPs off and um, I I like to do this because I feel like sometimes especially when you've got a lot of excess sticking up when you go for the cone, cone fit radiograph um, sometimes these GP cones can be sort of pulled out um, so that's why I like to chop them off and also when I go for the obturation um, it gives me like a like a really obvious mark to which um, these GP cones should be fitting as I push them to length with the sealer and when we look at the cone fit radiograph, it's at this point I think to myself, is there a, an extra canal here on um, on the on, on the mesial buckle? So um, as you can see here, we've got the blue and red lines, and I'm thinking to myself, is is there a uh, is there an MB2? Okay, and um, it's 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 a really really tough call to make on these because sometimes you can have a, an elongated root and it's only got one um, uh, canal and, and and sometimes there is a um, uh, an extra canal you but you just not looked hard enough for it and it's at this point now I'm going to have an extra look for this MB2 um, but I'm not convinced and what I'm really 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 worried about and I have done before is that I have been looking for an MB2 with my ultrasonics and I have caused a perforation which is not what you want to do so to settle this once and for all I um, need to take a CBCT uh, uh, image and um, in between what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pack it with um, like a like a PTFE and a bit of GI and when we take this um, cone beam CT scan we can see that the uh, MB root as shown here is quite elongated and um, if you know anything about Krasner and Ranko which is a paper about symmetry um, they they uh, they say that the um, the the sort of uh, the the canal space will always sit right bang in the middle of the kind of outer edge of, of the canal and, 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 and as you can see here the, uh, the 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 canal that's been shaped is off center so I um, another thing to mention as well is that in cone beam CT scans don't always pick up all anatomy or all canal spaces so um, you know th th this is what's making me concerned that maybe there is um, uh, an extra canal now um, it could be that the canals just completely closed up due to the you know the inflammation process I think that on balance that um, I don't see any developmental lines I've removed the dentin shelf and I can't see any um, any any obvious canal orifice for an MB2 
Um, I can't see any uh, change in colour on the pump chamber floor. The cone beam CT scan doesn't show any obvious canal. I am happy to abandon looking for an MB2. Now, what I um, do always do is I always explain this to the patients. You know, we get the cone beam CT scan up, up just a couple of slices, and we say to them, "This is the score. This is what I think." And and I would say, you know, 99 times out of 100, the patient is happy just to take your opinion on things. It's a really good thing for consent because obviously if it transpires that the tooth fails and then obviously they see someone else or they see you again and you do find mb2 well at least you've told the patient so once we've sort of ascertained that um where where there's only three canals we're going to do our final irrigation process so this is um we're using um 17 edta and sodium hypochlorite and it's going to be um activated with an ultrasonic activator and then we're gonna we're ready for obturation we're gonna obturate this with our um uh, one fill uh, biosonic sealer with these visco tips and the great thing about these visco tips is because of the truss access um it stops us from getting um, any sort of straight line access. These these kind of visco tips that have got these sort of like sleeves on, they they go in nicely. And and, and don't be shy with the uh, bisomic sealer. Um, you know, also cutting off the excess can be difficult. And sometimes if you haven't sort of um, adjusted the undercut with these with these very small access cavities, you can get um, remaining uh, fragments of GP and also you can get um, sort of with the sealer. And I suppose in a way it's not the end of the world if you can't get it all out, but it's, it's, it's highly desired that you do because uh, the problem with this is what you want is the GP at the CEJ and then you want a monoblock of composite um in the in the in the access cavity because obviously the most important thing here is that you get a good seal because that's really really important in root canal and if we look at the x-ray here again it looks looks really really nice and again you know if i'm being really really critical um there is a small void in in the uh in the access in 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 the coronal third here and that is obviously because i didn't have straight line access um I uh, I mentioned this to the patients and I've spoken to the referring dentist. I think he's just going to pull the filling out and just replace it for me. And that's what's good about having a good uh, relationship with your referring dentist. So you can have a little chin wag at them and say, oh, you know, this has happened. And it's absolutely fine. And that's it. So another week, another fantastic case. If you have any criticisms about this case, if there's anything you would have done differently, um, please comment below it really helps with the learning process and um, if you have any questions yourself I always answer all questions and and we have a membership program the membership program supports the channel um, and you get your access to exclusive content and I will see you next week